Hi, I'm Bria Bryant, Global CMO at Assembly, and I am at the Possible Conference and seated here with Alberto Garnier, a Business Growth Officer at Grupo Garnier. Really excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Yes, thank you so much. So I am excited to dig in and learn more about you and more about Grupo. So tell us, tell us about you and let us know about the company. So a bit about myself, born and raised in Costa Rica. Then I've uh, lived and worked in a bunch of different countries. I've actually started my career as an investment banker. Oh my and gosh. I did, I worked in the firm that worked uh, on the deal of forward uh, 3D with PMX, one of the original assembly firms. And my role now as Chief Growth Officer of Grupo Garnier is to look for opportunities, mergers, acquisitions of the group in Latin America and in North America now. Wow, okay, that is exciting. So Grupo has been growing rapidly. Tell me a little bit about your, your growth and what has led to that. So yes, Grupo Garnier has uh, over 100 years now. Um, we have over 50 companies, more than 1,500 people. We've been traditionally from Central America and Andean region, and we're now looking to expand further. And we've had now a focus on uh, Mexico, U.S., and now perhaps expanding a bit further south. Wow. So how many markets are you in currently? We're in 13 markets. 13 markets, okay. So we just had a big network win, Motorola, across Assembly, Grupo Garnier, and, um, and CPP. There's been a, a great example of how we've been able to work together with Assembly and feel like the same company. And, and I think Lenovo has been a great success case in which uh, we've been collaborating throughout the region and they've been able to communicate this success with Motorola and I think that's what has been so successful and now we've won Motorola for Brazil and we've been working it together with Assembly, Grupo Garnier uh, and CPB. So I'm just thinking about brands who are looking to enter new markets, it's not easy. Um, what advice would you give to a brand who's looking to break into Latin America? I think the most important thing is that even though Spanish is the same language in most of uh, Latin America, it's very different in how you communicate and get your message across in all of the markets. You need to understand how people consume media in each of these uh, markets. If a brand is able to partner with somebody that can do this at scale, if it's throughout all of Latin America, I think that's the most important thing. And as well, take into account that there are political risks as well in sure. throughout Latin America. So just be mindful of that uh, because it can change from yeah. market to market. And so many cultural nuances too. Exactly. Um, so really important to make sure that you're taking all of that into consideration. What brands do you think are doing a good job at that? A Latin American brand that has been growing and it's called Nutresa. Okay. It's one of the largest food companies in the world. I think that they've been communicating very effectively throughout all of Latin America and adjusting to each one of, of the subtleties and each one of the markets. So tell me more about uh, the growth that you're having in North America in particular, um, Miami growing at a very rapid pace. Um, what's, what's next? What can we see from all of this growth? Or, or are there any other markets that you're looking to tap into in the, in the US or in North America as a whole? We acquired a company in 2021 uh, that's called Arbol, and they're focused on Hispanic communications in okay. the US. And we've got two very interesting clients, uh, which are Visa and TikTok. Okay. So we're actually doing TikTok videos for TikTok. Oh. <laughs> and I, I think that. that that gives us a great uh, entry point to other brands to prove that we do great work. And there are lots of small regional clients uh, or mid-sized regional clients in Florida uh, that we're now winning some business. Um, and it can be, let's say we've, we've now been winning financial services with a focus on Hispanics. Okay. Uh, and I think that there is plenty more growth to go from there. We're starting in Florida, but then we can expand to the rest of the U.S. on this particular niche. So just thinking about the last year, um, what are some of the standout successes that Grupo Garnier has achieved? 2023 has been our, our best year financially. Uh, and having achieved that with some difficulties in, in different markets, uh, I think that 
we're very excited to what 2024 is, is bringing. Uh, just as an example, there's currency appreciation in several Latin American markets, which means that if we've got global international clients with uh, US dollars in revenue and the local currency appreciates, that's margin pressure for us. Um, and I think that the key is to, to diversify uh, and that's why we've been able now to move some teams from those countries to perhaps more efficient uh, markets. Well, thank you so much for your time. This has been great. I've, I've loved getting to know you a little bit more and learn more about the company. Thank you so much, Bria, for having me.